Four years old plus waiting two years equals six years old, but services are only available for kids up to five. You see that none of this makes any sense, right? So don't ask me to be respectful when you, you show a huge lack of respect for my family and what we need. I thought that with a diagnosis, things would start to happen, but no. Going private? I don't understand. Don't we have free health care in Quebec? Okay, let's see. Applied behavior analysis at $75 an hour, four hours a day, four days a week, that's $1,200. Occupational therapy once a week, $75 per session, uh, 52 weeks in a year, let's say two weeks vacation in the winter and two weeks vacation in the summer, 52 minus 4, 48, 1,200 plus 75, 1,275 plus times 48, that's $61,200. My partner and I, we earn $70,000 a year before taxes, and, we don't have that kind of money, and that's not counting the mortgage we have on the house. I mean, is all this money and therapy going to change anything? Is my daughter ever going to be like the other kids? The government has invested $146 million for people with developmental disorders. 10,000 people received such services last year. That's up more than 300% from a decade ago. Work is needing to be done in the field, but a lot of people are getting help. Hundred and forty six million divided by ten thousand is fourteen thousand six hundred. She needs sixty one thousand two hundred. Sixty one thousand two hundred is four point one nine one seven eight zero eight two times fourteen thousand six hundred. Sixty one thousand two hundred is four point one nine one seven eight zero eight two times more than fourteen thousand six hundred. Sixty one thousand 200 is 4.1917808 times more than 14,600. 10,000. 10,000. 10,000. 76,000 people with autism. 10,000. 10,000. 10,000. 76,000 people with autism. 10,000. 10,000. 10,000. 76,000 people with autism. That's correct! Hi, I'm Winston's educational specialist. I thought his mom told you I was coming today. Yes, I understand. I'm pretty sure she wanted me to start today. It'd be ideal for me to start today. There's so much work I can do to help Winston integrate into your preschool. If you give me a chance, a few visits, I'll show you. You told his mother he needed support or else he wouldn't be able to I'm here to help to ease tension and to help Winston integrate into your school, that's all. You have to trust me and let me do my work. I'm here now, so I'd like to start today. You won't know the possibilities unless you let me do my work. Look, I'm not here to judge you. 
This is about Winston, helping Winston. If you care about him and the other kids, thank you. You'll see, I'm not wasting your time. We got the call around 2.30 this afternoon. The information that we received was that the suspect was in a state of hysteria. He had a threatening demeanor towards all the other people in the vicinity. When we arrived on site, we did in fact confirm that the suspect was completely out of control. He was screaming so loud it hurt my ears. He had overturned things, tables and chairs. Complete maniac. The only person on site was the supervisor who was trying to calm him down. Everyone else was herded in another room for fear for their safety. So we did what we had to do. We jumped right into action. We grabbed the suspect by the arm, put one arm behind his back. We sat him down in a chair and we handcuffed him. All in all, it was a job well done. It's always a good day when things turn out that nicely. So no one was hurt thanks to our intervention. And that's why you're all getting on my nerves with all your questions. Yes, well, yes, I know he was only four years old, but our actions were not excessive. We did what we had to do. He, he, had a, he was frightening the other people in the vicinity. There were two and three-year-olds and, and babies. I had to do something to calm him down. I mean, what, what would you have me do? Yes, talk to him. Yes, well, ask him what's the matter. Well, maybe you would all have me buy him some Coke and some ice cream and some gummy bears. Look. You all know the procedure as well as I do. When someone is a threat to the public safety, we neutralize him. Hmm? Autistic? No, I don't, I don't know anything about that. Four years old raging like a maniac like you wouldn't believe. Look, I, I'm not happy this happened. Okay? All I did was follow my training. If any of you have new procedures on how we are supposed to deal with people with autism, well, then you let me know because I don't know anything about that. What I do know is the public safety. That is what's most important. Is my brother retarded? Why are you asking? Somebody at daycare told me that because he carries his stuffed mice everywhere and he can't speak properly. We've talked about this. He has autism. He is autism? He has autism. He has autism. But is he retarded? We don't use that word, okay? It's a bad one. We say intellectual challenges. Uh, is he intellectual channels? How can I answer that question? By any criteria that we use to measure intelligence, my son Richie seems to be challenged. But when he took an evaluation test over at Giant Steps, he couldn't or wouldn't answer simple questions, but he got 95% of the difficult ones right. Or like when we went to New York for the second time, he clearly remembered which streets and avenues to take to get to the Toys R Us with the giant Ferris wheel. We stepped out of the hotel, he grabbed me by the arm, and he marched his way through the pressing crowds. Some of the brightest people I know have trouble reading maps or following simple directions. Or there was the time we were at a big family barbecue. Aunts, uncles, cousins, grandparents, friends. I was pushing Richie on the swings. He loves the swings. Time passed, my arms got tired. I could smell the burgers cooking on the grill. I could taste them in my mouth. I said to Richie, Daddy's tired. He let me escape to the picnic table where I munched on some burgers, all dressed. Mustard, relish, ketchup, lettuce, tomatoes, pickles, onions. 
I was into my second burger when I looked up to find Richie standing at the top of the slide. He wouldn't budge, and there was a logjam of kids whining and complaining. I said, Richie, come down. I had to ask him a couple times. He wouldn't budge. Finally, I had to put my burger down and walk over to the slide. Richie, come down. Finally, he slid down. He grabbed me by the arm, and he walked me over to the swings. He may have trouble communicating, but sometimes he has no problem at getting exactly what he wants. Oh, sister! <laughs> you are so autistic! <laughs> Weaponized autism! <laughs> autistic screeching! You are so autistic! <laughs> <laughs> keep him quiet for a while. I never thought that this would be my life, you know. Every day it's just the same thing. So repetitive, so unbelievable, so unstoppable. Just this constant break without a, well, it's constant repetition without a break in between. I mean, there were some behavior issues with my first child, but this what kind of father am I if I think I love my first child, Josh, more than I love Billy? I mean, life with Josh is just so much simpler and, and lighter. With Billy, I, I just feel so trapped. You know, I have to adapt every aspect of my life for this child. I even, I even quit my job to get him to calm down and stop screaming. And I sit here complaining, what kind of father does that make me? Josh and I, we just have so many things in common, and we get so crazy with our costumes for Halloween, and, 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 and the costumes aren't just for Halloween, you know, I, I remember this one summer, we both got dressed up as pirates, and we went down to the forest, and we went to look for treasures all among the trees. <sighs> you know that, that famous moment in Star Wars, you know, Luke, I am your father, <laughs> The look on Josh's face, <laughs> priceless, will never happen with Billy. He can't sit still long enough to watch Star Wars. As a matter of fact, the only thing Billy will sit still for and focus on are the Muppets. Yeah, he will read every Muppet-themed book. He loves every Muppet show with him. It's just Muppets, Muppets, Muppets. He's even obsessed with the Muppets in Spanish. Yeah, as a matter of fact, he's obsessed with Spanish too. So if any of you speak Spanish, the boy won't leave you alone. I, I hold on to any happy moment that I share with Billy. The way that a starving man will hold on to his last drop of water in the desert. I hold on so tight because... It's the only thing keeping me from dropping 10,000 feet into the abyss. You know that, that place where you are living, but you no longer feel alive? So I cling. <laughs> yeah. I remember this one summer. <laughs> I got some tickets to see the Muppets. 
I'm kind of connected, so I got us tickets to see them rehearse. Now, we didn't tell them where we were going until the day I we said, Billy, we are going to see the Muppets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you are going to watch them rehearse, but, 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 you can't scream. You can't make any noise, so you got to, <laughs> yeah. So, for 20 minutes, walk in from our house, flash days off. Ugh. Not a word. For 30 minutes, sitting down in the lobby, waiting for the ushers to let us in. Not a word. For one hour, sitting in Place des Arts, watching the technician set up and get ready. Not a word. Not a peep. Oh, looks like the show's getting ready to start. The music starts, the curtains open, curtain the frog's head, curtain, Kermit the frog's head pops out, it's the Muppet Scala, and the curtains open all the way, and the Muppets come out. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> and he just sat there, <laughs> and he knew, oh, and he was just enthralled. And he didn't make one sound for the rest of the show. Dear useless parent, it's obvious that you're incompetent and can't control your annoying kid. I'm sick of his constant screaming. It disturbs the whole neighborhood. If you can't figure out how to control that rotten kid of yours, I'll get the whole street to sign a petition. Then I'll drop it off at children's services to make sure that they take the kid away and put him in an institution where they can teach him to shut up. And if that doesn't work, maybe you should think of euthanizing him to put him out of his misery so we can all live in peace and quiet. Yours truly, a neighbor. I have uh, three boys, <clears throat> of which the youngest has autism. He doesn't speak at all. He's blonde, blonde hair, and big blue eyes, blue like, like the sky. But when he looks at me, it's like he doesn't see me. Oh, you know when you're talking to someone and they look you in the eye, you know that they see you and that they're listening to you. But Carl, he looks at, I don't know, it's like he, he doesn't really see me. I dress him every morning, I make sure his teeth are brushed, that he goes to the bathroom, I make sure he eats well. I'm at his side every evening when he goes to sleep. He must know that I love him. It, it must bring him comfort, I'm sure. Well, I find it difficult to be missing out on a connection with my son like I have with my other two boys. <laughs> One look in their eyes and I know what they are thinking. But Carl is like a blank sheet of paper. Like this afternoon at the school spring recital, his class, the fourth grade students, they took to the stage and they were nicely arranged by heights. 
like in an old-fashioned picture, and they all sang so wonderful, like, like angels, like at Christmas time. And Carl, he stood at the end of the row, a little apart from his other classmates. <laughs> Most of the students were looking at the choir leader, and some of them, they, they found their parents in the audience, but Carl looked into space, at nothing, really. <laughs> he was with the other students, but at the same time, he was apart, invisible. He swayed a little, his mouth open, like he, he was trying to mouth the words, to, to sing, but he couldn't. Now, don't get me wrong. I, I don't want to change him. I think he is beautiful. But what really bothers me is, is those looks of pity that everybody gave me when we were leaving the recital, like all these happy families, the children thrilled with their success, the high-pitched squeals of delights of the little ones. Happy families all around, smiling, Mothers, self-satisfied, to be teaching tolerance of a differently abled child, but happy that they're not blessed with having such a child. Those looks of pity. I smile back, grateful that I have two boys that are healthy and bright and active. But it would be a lie to tell you that I accept Carl's faith. There must be a way that exists that I can, can find a way to connect with him. Like as the years go by, I watch him grow and it weighs ever so heavy on my heart and I am obsessed with this question. Is there a way, is there any therapy in this world that can help my son escape his inner cloud? and that can give me a kind of a clue, a, a crumb to taste. Just to tell me, what are you dreaming of, darling? Do you see me? Do you see me? Listen, your son disturbs the class every day. He, he gets up, he screams for no reason. Now, I understand that he doesn't have any intellectual challenges and that he, he can keep up with the curriculum just fine, but he does so enough that it causes serious distractions and keeps the other students from learning. Now, I, I understand that this only happens a few times a day, but it happens enough to cause serious distractions. Now, in a classroom with other students with special needs, he wouldn't be such a distraction. He would have access to teachers who have the training and know how to deal with him. He, he would be able to progress at his own pace. It would be better for him. Now, already, we have tried to integrate him, but it's not working. And. I don't have the budget for an integration aid devoted exclusively to him. And even with an integration aid, he still distracts all the other students. Now, I, I'm sorry, but I've already made my decision. Now, I, owe, I, have, I have other needs to accommodate. The students, teachers, parents. I don't have any more resources to dedicate to your son. Now, I'm sorry, there's, please, there's nothing more to be done. No, there, there's no use insisting. I have already made my decision. No, please, please, please respect it. It will be better for everyone this way. My mom thought something was wrong with me when I still couldn't speak at the age of two. 
I started public school in grade one. I spent a couple years at some program at the Jewish General Getting Therapy. People used to ask my mom, how come Jimmy doesn't talk? Why does he cry all the time? Why is he making that face? How come he doesn't do this? How come he doesn't do that? I could be a stubborn child. I didn't like to ask for help. I got annoyed when people tried to help. My mom would try to help me with my homework. Once I got so annoyed, I pushed her. I pushed her right out of the room. One day I was at my uncle's with my family. I was being blamed for something that happened. I can't remember what. Say you did it. I didn't do anything. <clears throat> Say you did it. I didn't do anything. <clears throat> Say you did it. I didn't do anything. <laughs> and it kept going. My mom was so bad at me. I, I think it was the stress. People asking these questions all the time, the problems at school, the stress, it got to her. Deep down inside, I wasn't what she expected. It wasn't my fault. Here, just take it. Well, I try to spend time with him, but I can't, it's, it's too much. He's out of control. He can't sit still for one minute. We can't go to any place. We can't have any conversations. We can't play games. <laughs> I can't even tell him a story. The Muppets. No, I'm not going to, to read another Muppet book again. Here, please take it. I'm sorry. It's just too hard. Just take it. You'll need it. You'll need it to pay for all the therapies. Just take it. I can't be the grandmother you want me to be. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm too old for this. Don't tell me that I'm doing not enough. Just take the money. I hate autism. If I didn't have it, my parents wouldn't be so strict. They don't let me play video games like Skyrim. Now, yes, I know it's for 18 years and older, and yes, I know it's only for 12 years old, but lots of kids my age play these games. I also, they also got me on this, like, gluten-free diet. If I didn't have autism, I could eat anything I wanted to, like Pepsi and chocolate cake. I also used to get brushed. Yeah, brushed, like six times a day, something about it helping to calm me down. <laughs> it would give me these compressions all over my body, you know, all over my joints like this. <laughs> and my mom, she gets super mad at me and she nags me all the time. Whenever I get into fights with Mark at school, she's always telling me what to do. She's always like, walk away, ignore him, go tell a teacher. But I like arguing with Mark. He's so short, he's half my height. He has these really small feet, tiny feet. He's so short half my height. And whenever I see him, I'm like, Mark, you have tiny feet. You have tiny feet. And then he tries to kick me. Or he tries to punch me. And I think it's like super funny, but no one else does. And everyone always takes Mark's side, even though he's the one who tries to kick me all the time. He's like, like he just gets mad if I just say hi or glance down at those tiny feet. And my mom says, it's because everyone remembers how I like to use to bug Alex in grade five. Like I used to like to squish his arm all the time. So then after a while, like Alex, he got like super annoyed by that and he didn't want to be friends anymore. So after a while, like I apologized to Mark for squishing his arm all the time. So now we're friends again. So that's why everyone's always on Mark's side. That's what my mom says. <sighs> but I get super mad at her because she's always like, you know, she's always like, she's always like telling me like, if I didn't have autism, I wouldn't get into fights with people. And she's always like, you need to work on your social skills. You need to take deep breaths to calm down. Blah, 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 blah. Meow, 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 meow. But I like, I, I just like getting into arguments with people. It's fun. And it's not because I have autism. In fact, I think I've been falsely diagnosed. And you know what? You know what? They only say bad things about people with autism, so don't even remind me that I have it. No, Mom! No, leave me alone! I don't want to talk with you! No, I'm not coming out! Leave me alone! 
¡Ah! 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 I can't believe you kept this from me. You should have told me sooner. Now leave me alone. All this time, I never understood why I was different. Why I couldn't relate to all these people? Why they hated me so much? Oh, all the therapy and appointments! It's not fair! You shouldn't have kept it from me! You shouldn't have kept it a secret! I have the right to know! Leave me alone! I just need some time. <laughs> Stuart is the eldest of the family. Then there's Paul, then there's me. Stuart has severe autism and never learned to speak or read. My dad is convinced that if someone can speak, they don't have autism. <laughs> My parents start, started all sort of st therapies, but the only form of communication that Stuart was able to learn was American Sign Language. And even then, he couldn't form sentences. He could actually only tell you words like coffee, home, Hungary. Or if you ask him, how are you? He'll sign OK. But he'll do that even if he's sick. The only thing I can tell is when Stuart is upset. Then I know for sure what he's feeling. He'll start to pace and he'll... Uh, do, 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 do. Then I know for sure. Otherwise, I, I don't really know. I adored Stuart. We used to spend every minute at home together. I couldn't wait to get home from school to teach him what I learned. We used to swim together all the time when he trained for the Special Olympics. It was hard sometimes, but I, I never minded. We were a package deal back then. If a boy asked me to go for ice cream, Stuart had to come. You couldn't have me without him. But uh, we all grew up, and uh, I made a life for myself. I can't help but feel guilty some, sometimes when, that I abandoned Stuart and my parents they were, life, they were left behind to cope with him in their aging years. Stuart doesn't live at home anymore. My mother fell seriously ill, and when she couldn't get out of bed to take care of him, he became very distraught in the change in his routine. He didn't understand that she was too sick and couldn't maintain his daily schedule. It got to the point that he would pull her by the arm to try to drag her out of bed. I mean, for so many years, she was the center of his universe, that the person that made things possible, that made everything go smoothly for him. So my parents had to place him in a home, and uh, mom died a few months later. <laughs> Stuart lives on, seemingly unaffected, in his new home. I feel guilty sometimes that I don't see him daily anymore. I have my own life to live, so. Oh, gosh, uh, that sounds so selfish. Or does it? I'm married to the greatest guy in the world. We have two beautiful children. But I missed Stuart. I can call up and say hi. Call him up and just shoot the breeze. Hmm. I think he's, he's well taken care of. I think he's happy. But I miss the life we used to share. Your call is important to us. Please hold to maintain your calling priority. A service representative will be with you shortly.
I just told you that I've already spoken to social services and, and they've told me several times that it's your department that takes care of education. It's, it's, it's the Department of Education that provides services for people with autism. It's been going on so long that, that we play this game going back and forth. Uh, uh, education, social services, no. Education, no. Social services, education, social services, education, social services, education, no. That's enough. Tell me, would it be such a big deal if you let my son go to school? I know he's over 21, but a daycare service isn't good enough. He needs stimulation, interaction with people like him, uh, music, cooking classes, games, some kind of life. No! Oh, why don't they understand? Fuck, don't they have any kids? Oh, uh, I, I'm sorry. Um, listen, just because he doesn't speak doesn't mean he, ha he doesn't have <gasps> hopes and dreams. He, he likes to, to cook and to see friends. Why don't you get it? Uh, uh, do you hear him screaming? I, I'm sorry, but that's how it is now, because of you. Yes, because of you. Months ago, I told you where this was heading, but, but no one listened to me. No one took me seriously. Now he, he's in a crisis. He's lonely. He's in despair. I mean, do you hear him? No, I am not calling social services again. They're just going to tell me the same thing. No, I am not driving him and leaving him at a hospital emergency. I, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. But I need help. Please. I beg you. I, I followed the instructions that the occupational therapist gave me at first. She told me that the sensory blanket was supposed to be used to, to stimulate him and only when he was calm so that he could stay focused and, and could stay calm. I know I wasn't supposed to use it when he was having a meltdown, but I don't know. I started using it when he was agitated because I found it helped. I mean, the teacher and I, we were trying to find ways to calm this kid down when he was in a meltdown and we really didn't have any other strategy. So, so yeah, we started to use the blanket uh, when he was anxious rather as a quick fix than, than to do it before to prevent it. It's just that when he was anxious, uh, he disturbed the other students and, and the teachers, so... Well, you weren't there. You don't know what it was. It, it, I know he died. He suffocated because I didn't use the blanket properly. But I didn't know. I, I didn't know that, that he could suffocate. I, I, I don't even remember what got him upset that day. I just, I just held him in the blanket and he suffocated. So yeah, it is, it is my fault that he is gone. But I just didn't know. My son had Asperger's and committed suicide. He was 16 years old at the time. It happened in his room, right next to the room where I sleep. We found him there sitting on the floor with a strap, a key strap, here, twisted, tight. 
hanging from the doorknob of his bedroom closet. Lifeless. He was gone. I still don't know why he did it. He said he was lonely, that he fell apart from the world. But don't we all feel like that at some point or another? He had some altercations that put some kids with school, and he was suspended once for hitting someone. But he was never bullied to the extreme, like those stories that you hear on the news. There was nothing like that. He had two or three good friends with whom he would go to the movies with, the ones that would come over to hang out once in the blue moon. So alone. But he had us, his family, three siblings, yet so aloof. He would never join for family activities like partaking in a game of risk or watching a movie. No. He got angry at us a lot. He flew into rages. He scared me. Therapist after therapist after therapist. He didn't like any of them. He enjoyed art therapy. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. It's like I fell into a lull into thinking that everything would turn out all right. His cousin was teaching him how to play Stairway to Heaven on the guitar. He even bought a new pair of jeans for an upcoming field trip, but uh, clearly I missed something. Did I even try hard enough to prevent it from happening? I, oh God, I miss you and I'm so mad at you that you're gone, that you chose not to stay and fight with us. We could have fought alongside you and helped you somehow. No, oh, why did you do it? Why? If only I could see things through your eyes and feel things through your heart just to get a glimpse to better understand. Maybe I could have done something differently, done better. Did this happen because of your Asperger's? Or was it the world around you who drove you to this? Was, was it me? Was it your dad? Was it your friends? What was it? I've, I've mulled this over for a long time now. Oh, and there's no use in wallowing in the shame and the guilt anymore. The only sense I can make out of all of this is that it happened. It happened to me. It happened to us. And I don't want it to happen to anyone else. Oh, so, what more can I say? Just listen to the people around you. Just really listen. I am from no siblings and a massive family. I am from Canada, India, the Caribbean, and France. I am from two homes, one in St. Ari, one in Nuns Island. I am from video games, action, and adventure, and RPG. I am from funny videos, hilarious baby videos, comedy videos. I am from maps, Montreal ones, Quebec ones. I am from buildings, highways, and so much more. I am from imagination, imagining all sorts of cool stuff. I am from distractions, getting off task very easily. I am from nice parents, nice, caring, and loving.
My name is Bobby. I'm 25 years old. I go to the farm to grow. I like taking care of the animals because they have babies. I make bread, I make soap, and I milk the goats. I, I also learn to manage my money, organize my food, make a budget, and social skills. Sometimes we go bowling or help out at the food bank. Uh, Friday's pizza night. The country is relaxing. Uh, when I get stressed out, I think about my favorite person, my, my mom. Or I have my favorite song. And he's watching us all with the eye of the tiger. I feel good. I have a job. I could stay up to two nights a week at the farm. I've grown a lot there. I, it is good for me and my family. Thou speaks to right. I am that merry wanderer of the night. I jest to Oberon and make him smile when I a fat and bean fed horse beguile, neighing in likeness of a filly foal. Sometime lurk I in a gossip's bowl in very likeness of a roasted crab, and when she drinks, against her lips I bob and on her withered two lap pour the hell. The wisest aunt telling the saddest tale sometime for three foot stool mistaketh me. <laughs> then slip I from her bum and boop, down topples she and Taylor cries and falls into a cough. And then the whole choir hold their hips and laugh and waxen in their mirth and knees and swear a merrier hour was never wasted there. <laughs> But room fairy, here comes Oberon. Head. Pain. He's the cutest guy I've seen in a long time, with those brown curly locks and his emerald green eyes. He's taller than me, which is a good thing. I don't like boys who are shorter than me. I dream of reaching up to him, my arms around his neck, and putting my lips to his. I wonder if they're soft. I imagine him putting his arms around me like in a slow dance at school. And I wonder if that would happen. Would I be able to bear his touch against the small of my back? Or would it irritate me? I couldn't help it. But say I cringed, he might think that I don't like him. And yet how untrue that would be, for I so do love his smile. I wish we could just dance and dance and dance and twine like this forever. What if we fell in love and were married one day like my sister or my cousin or my neighbor or my parents? What if? What if? What if? He gets up at 7 a.m. He uh, takes a shower and gets dressed. He has breakfast at 8 a.m. The bus picks him up at 8.30. He can't be late. He starts work at 9 a.m. He makes locks from 9 to noon. He has lunch at 12. He sits by himself. Some co-workers are mad at him. He makes more locks than they do. That's what his boss told me. He makes locks from noon to 4. At 4 p.m., he finishes work. Yeah. 
uh, the bus takes him home at 4.30. He gets home at 5 p.m. and watches Dr. Phil. Oh, every Tuesday he goes bowling. Yes, he goes bowling with his housemates. He loves it, he's pretty good at it too. <laughs> yeah, tomorrow we're going to Tim R. Martin's and I can't mix up the days that, because I visit him because it really upsets him when I do that. Oh, he goes to bed at 10 p.m. I'm really, really happy for Mrs. Jones and her staff that really take good, good care of him. He goes to bed at 10 p.m. Good night, Stuart. I love you. I like music. I like music. I listen to songs in my head from when I was little. I am alone. But I am here with you. I do not smile, but I am happy. I scream and shout, but I do love you. I am more than a statistic. I want to be an engineer. Poetry is my life. life. Stop treating me, me differently. I love, love swimming. I love, love to follow the stock market. Painting is my life. life. No, no one, one came to my birthday party. I always feel alone. alone. To be I, I am no nothing. nothing. It hurts. hurts. My heart aches. Listen to me. Too much noise. noise. I, I matter. Do you hear, hear me? me? Hear me. Listen. Listen. I am here. I, I am here. Look, Look at me. me. Listen, see me, hear me.